planting sugar cane and, and once you see it pop out the ground, that's, for me it's, it's like a sense of hope because you have a new crop that's growing. And it's not a better feeling in the world when you see what you planted and, and it pops out of the ground. In this area, at one time, there were 60 black farms. Now that number is four. That's hard when you see that. I mean, for instance, like, we used to farm this whole big old block here. This whole block we used to farm. I mean, it's, 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 it's difficult to see because it's, you know, it's, it's not us on the property. And it's no reason why we shouldn't be on the property. No reason. Farming for black people is the oldest occupation for us in, in the United States. We went from slaves uh, to, to, to sharecroppers, uh, surviving the horrific laws of Jim Crow, all of these things that we had to endure. Angie and June are just such wonderful salt-of-the-earth people. They ran this sugarcane farm in Iberia Parish, and they were some of the few remaining black farmers in, in the country, and particularly in Louisiana. When Jin was working as a farmer, he won awards for the, for the crop that he made every year. You would think 5,000 acres, I would have been okay, but actually, I wasn't. Within 10 or 15 years of award-winning crops, he was bankrupt lost the farm, lost everything. Um, and the, the other parties in this litigation said that he was just a bad farmer. I mean, I contemplated suicide because I, I felt like I lost everything. The loans that were involved in, in the Provost family and what ultimately led to the destruction of their business were FSA guaranteed crop loans. For sugarcane, you need at least six to eight hundred dollars per acre. So if you do that times five thousand acres, I mean you're you're looking at almost a four million dollar crop loan that you need to farm that adequately. The USDA was approving like just about a million or a little less for him. Ultimately, the deck was stacked so much against them that there was almost no way that they could succeed, and they didn't. His USDA guaranteed lender was photocopying his signature to farm loans and lowering the approved amount. That's what was happening. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, we had dead cats placed in a tractor. We right. had the windows blown out with a gun. We had center blocks, brand new center blocks placed in the middle of the field right. when I started cutting the cane and it just broke up all the blades. I mean, they wanted us out of form and by any means necessary. But, you know, we, we made the decision to fight back though. So, and, and that's what we we're gonna do. And that's what we're doing. Right. Provost versus First Guarantee Bank was filed in federal district court in New Orleans. The original theory of the case was that the Provost family had been discriminated against in the lending practices of the bank. We did settle the case. Um, but there's still so much work to there, be done. There's still so much. I mean, litigation is hard. I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, as a litigation is not easy. When we finally got to the end of the case, we tried to get Angie and June eligible for the American Rescue Plan provision that was going to forgive the loans to black farmers. And ultimately, that, that was going to be the success of the claim that they made. The American Rescue Plan provision for the loan forgiveness has been stayed by various federal courts. And so they have nothing. Now, since they did these court cases with, you know, with Miller, now everything is on hold. You know, some of these judges should be ashamed of themselves because they know the history. It was white farmers who got 99.9% .9 of the debt relief in the first place. And that's why we wind up in federal court, and that's why we turned to Congress to, to actually try to get the relief. And, you know, I think it's very significant 
that they've admitted to past discrimination, but they're not willing to admit to the ongoing fouling of complaints, the ongoing discrimination. The reason why we tell our story is not because we want to see a system torn down, is that we want to see the system better for us all.